Hello guys, welcome to a new video. In this video I'm going to show you how to package up an iMac if you're trying to sell one. Um, it's very difficult to package these up because of the uh, size of the screen, how vulnerable it is. Uh, courier companies don't look after your parcels, generally speaking. Even if you put fragile on it, it's likely to get damaged. So you need to make sure, really make sure when you send something that it's well packaged. So what have we done so far? Well, I've cleaned the screen up, it's nice and shiny, cleaned the back of it, got rid of all the dust, made it nice and presentable for the new buyer. Um, I've put on these um, soft sleeves that you get with uh, any sort of monitor you might buy. So you can reuse packaging, I always recommend to reuse packaging. If you ever get get anything in a box, put it in your garage, put it, put it in in a cellar or somewhere out of the way in your loft and keep hold of it because it's expensive to buy packaging so reuse your packaging whenever possible um, a good resource for getting uh, boxes is go to a local store just ask have you got any bo spare boxes don't buy them um, go to a local retailer say can I go around to your skip see if you've got any boxes there uh, that have been broken down you know it saves you a fortune so think about that Anyway, so what we've done here is I've bought some bubble wrap, because you always need some bubble wrap. Um, I've got a 10 metre roll there. And we're going to basically wrap it on top of this um, soft covering that you can get off existing uh, monitors. When you get a new monitor, it'll come with a covering. Keep hold of it, because you can reuse it and put it on uh, any other monitor you're going to send. And it, it'll give your screen a little bit of protection. Not a huge amount of protection, but a little bit. And it's... It's pretty decent, um, the, these uh, coverings that they put on the LCD monitors. Um, it's very soft, it's not very strong, but it, it will give your uh, monitor a little bit of protection. So what we're going to do, we're going to put some bubble wrap on top. Uh, once, one, once I've done that, I'm going to show you how it looks. Right guys, I've uh, basically put bubble wrap all the way around it. I've put two layers of bubble wrap. This is the large gauge stuff, not the small stuff. So it'll give it quite a, a lot of protection. I've done it all the way around, as you can see. Um, and the idea is to give it a good coating of bubble wrap. But we're not going to be solely reliant on bubble wrap, guys. Remember that. The next stage is I'm going to put a cardboard sleeve over the um, screen. And then we're going to be looking at using some polystyrene protection. So you'll need that, guys, to protect it. Because um, unfortunately, courier companies don't treat your products very well. I know that because I've been a courier myself and I've worked in a call centre for a courier firm. So, what you need to do is make sure you give it a good, adequate amount of protection. Right, guys, I've cut um, a piece of cardboard which is double sided, which is going to be like a, a sleeve to go over the bubble wrap to give it some added protection. This is to give more um, added protection to the screen really um, because all, all the bubbles will be giving you quite a bit of force towards the cardboard and it should give it more padding. So we're going to put the sleeve properly on and then I'll look at showing you how we box it up properly. Um, generally speaking companies, will, especially Apple, will use their own specialised um, box which is designed for the iMac which obviously has uh, polystyrene and it's, it's built in such a way that it's really difficult for um, any sort of courier company to damage it. However, if you're an individual like myself and you don't have ac access to factory processes, um, the best you can do is find a sturdy box and bubble wrap. But I'm showing this video to try and illustrate it that you need to get it right to be, or be able to make sure this gets to your um, um, buyer um, undamaged. So I'm just showcasing what the process that I'm going through. Hopefully it'll be helpful. Um, so as soon as I've done this, I'll, I'll show you the packaging material I've got and hopefully that'll be a good idea for you. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, a cardboard base around the base to protect the aluminium base as well. That's something else you need to do, make sure you protect your base. So I'll show you uh, what that looks like when I've finished. Okay. 
Right guys, um, this is the iMac, how I've, got, I've managed to box it up. And obviously you can see the screen is well protected. Um, and we put our cardboard sleeve on, front and back. I put cardboard around the actual stand as well to protect the aluminium. I'll just show you what it looks like flat, like so. I've also done a cardboard sleeve around the stand itself, as you can see there, um, and it's protecting the actual um, stand quite well. So, this is how I've actually protected the iMac. Um, so, if you guys out there are in the process of selling an iMac, you might want to consider doing this um, to protect it. Um, so the next stage is we're going to put it in a box. Um, when you're selling an iMac computer guys, you need to take into account uh, the weight of the machine, the weight of your box, the weight of your packaging material, whenever you get a quote online. Uh, and also measure your box and make sure the carrier will uh, ship it for you. So the next process I think, now we've actually protected the screen significantly, is to look at putting this in the box. Um, I'm going to weigh the box and find out how much it weighs first. Um, and then I'll, I'll go through the process of putting it in a box. You'll need a really big box because you want to protect this. Um, I originally got this in a standard box with a lot of uh, loose um, polystyrene. However, if you don't have any loose polystyrene lying around, this is the best next way of protecting the screen. Hopefully, this should be enough protection to protect, protect the screen. So we're going to put it in a box and hopefully you know that will give you a good idea of what you need to send an iMac screen. Now keep in mind this is a 27 inch iMac screen, it's a really large screen. So the, the, the thing you don't want this to happen, um, and I've worked for courier companies before and I'll tell you some stories. Um, even if you put fragile packaging on, I've seen them thrown around like footballs. Um, in various um, courier companies I work for in the UK specifically, this might apply to the US or any other country for that matter, um, but general packages don't get treated very well. Um, they fall off conveyor belts, you might have a conveyor belt which is what, um, I don't know, 10, 10 metres high from the ground. If it falls off that conveyor belt onto the ground and you've got an LCD screen it's going to smash. Believe me it will. And it does happen, I've seen it, you know. So what you need to do is make sure you've got lots and lots of layers of protection for anything. And a lot of people will tell you this, and a lot of the courier companies will tell you this. IMAX LCD screens are not covered in insurance. So if they find out that it's an LCD screen that got damaged in, in their system, they won't give pay out insurance wise. They won't pay out for an iMac either, so I'm a little bit confused how Apple uses courier companies. Um, you know, do they just take the loss, or do they actually uh, um, try and seek some sort of compensation from the company? Because uh, at the end of the day, you're paying for a service that you hope gets there undamaged, but isn't always the case. And you, I always thought, why do you have to pay insurance for that? It's their job to get your product from A to B undamaged, isn't it? Anyway, um, we'll go through the next step of making sure this gets protected and gets to the buyer um, undamaged. Uh, it's listed on eBay at present, so we'll probably will sell. Um, I just want to do a, a video here to show you guys how to go about packaging it up. Um, so, the next stage is to put it in the box. Right guys, um, I thought I'd show you a type of box I managed to obtain from a, a local retailer just outside uh, um, a retail estate. So I'll just show you the box. It's quite a big one. As you can see, it's quite huge. Um, I just want to tell you about what you can do with boxes. Um, if the box is too large, you can actually cut it up and make it smaller. Um, normally, just cut the end off, fold it in a little bit, and use a lot of sellotape. And that normally is a good way of reducing the size of a box. So I just thought I'd uh, let you know about that. Right, if you go to a local retail estate where there's a lot of shops, right, you can, in, and if you ask them politely, they'll allow you to go round the back 
and take any boxes or package, packaging material that's there, such as polystyrene, which is very useful for packaging fragile items, um, such as sending this iMac. We, we've got some polystyrene inserts we're going to put in the box, and I'll just show you what that looks like in the video. Here's an idea of the layer of protection we're going to have in the box. So basically we've got a layer of polystyrene, a few polystyrene inserts and lots of newspaper. Newspaper is a useful tool for uh, packaging and protecting your valuable goods. So we've got the uh, bottom part of the box constructed. So the next step is to put the iMac in the box to see how it uh, feels in terms of how well it's protected. So let's just take the iMac that we've pre-packaged in this well-packaged package. So it's a package within a package. Let's just pop it in there, see how it sits. It seems to be well protected there in the corners. Um, I think the next step is to put packaging on the top. Um, maybe put a bit more packaging underneath where the actual stand is. So the stand has got protection. And maybe a bit more packaging on the corners to protect the corners. But we're getting there basically. Um, so I'll show you the next stage once we've done that. Right, so we've put some corner protection in to protect the actual corners of the iMac because the screen is the most important thing so you want to protect it as much as possible and the next step is to protect the top of the screen for that I've got a bit of foam here that will protect and go in like, like so and that should give the screen a lot of protection but just to double check that um, we're going to break up some more of this foam and build up some braces to brace any sort of impacts that it could have. Just to make the uh, thing a little bit stronger. Um, and that's what we're trying to do is make sure this box is indestructible basically. Because uh, that's more or less how the iMac um, boxes are designed to take as much impact as possible um, and that's the case we're trying to achieve here. So I've finished the box off, uh, there's a little bit to do such as putting more tape on but essentially I've completed the uh, build for the iMac protection. As you can see here, um, here is the um, polystyrene insert that I found with some cardboard that I'm going to put on the top. Most of, I put a lot of um, newspaper in, scrubbed up newspaper put that in there so this should be ready to uh, put together but I've also cut down the box a little bit as well as you can see it was about out here but if you reduce the size of your box it'll end up being cheaper in the long run when you decide to post it off um, so essentially the construction of the protection of the iMac is complete um, this should get to the buyer undamaged um, but in terms of what it takes to reduce the size of a box is quite simple you just cut a bit of it out uh, fold in the ends uh, tape it up with a lot of tape you want to use as much tape as possible so that there's no possibility of it unravelling during transit so I just hope this video was a little bit helpful for you guys who are concerned about sending a higher value item out and you want to have the maximum protection available you want to protect your product so guys, when you're uh, sending something out, you want to give it the maximum protection you can possibly do. Don't skimp on protection. Don't put a, a, a smallish, an item in a smallish box. Get a large box and pad it the hell out of it. So they make sure there's no possibility of it getting to its location damaged. Because at the end of the day, even if you get a little bit of compensation through insurance, it's not going to compensate you for your time, your effort. The customer's experience as well, don't forget about that. Um, and essentially, you want to use as much padding as possible. If you can't afford the polystyrene, um, use newspapers. It's, a, it's a quite a useful 
products are used to uh, protect your products. And in the old days, that's what they used for porcelain uh, characters, models, um, models, that sort of thing. Uh, so I just wanted to do a little bit of a video here to showcase what you do to parcel up a high value item like an iMap. Um, any comments feel free to uh, make any suggestions. Um, but it is a lot cheaper to go to a retail estate, beg a few boxes, or go into the uh, skip, pick pick a box up, then then go to say um, a post office, you know, and pick up some boxes because the boxes you get at the post office will be really poor quality, they'll be very expensive, and not really worth it. Um, and you're better off getting a really heavy duty box like this than getting one of those skimpish boxes you can pick up at the post office. So, you know, just remember to package your products up as carefully as you possibly can with as much protection as possible so it gets to your customer undamaged. That's the goal because the curry companies don't look after your products, don't look after your boxes. You might think they do, they might say they do on the phone, they don't. They don't give it down. Um, and then the insurance isn't worth the paper it's written on half of the time. There are so many exclusions on their insurance policies, uh, such as LCD screens, uh, porcelain characters, anything breakable, glass is not covered. Believe it or not, even a, technically speaking, a camera lens isn't really covered because it's got glass in it. Um, and like IMAX art as well, because the class is an LCD screen. Um, computers tend to be. However, uh, a lot of electronics and cameras are not covered in the insurance policies as well. So, just remember that guys, that you need to safeguard yourself by packaging it the right way. So, I've finished making the box. I've reduced the overall length of the box by approximately 35%. Um, what I basically did to create the end of this box was fold the lip in, fold the sides in, cut the, the tops, move it in a little bit, use a lot of parcel tape, but this build has a lot of integrity and it is more than strong enough to hold the iMac. And I just wanted to say that you can build your own boxes and it surprises, surprises me how many people don't do this. Um, you can always get a large box, cut it up, uh, make it smaller and suit the item you're sending. But what you've got to try and do is make the box fit the product, but you've got to make sure you've got enough room for your protection. Um, because you want to make sure your product gets to your customer undamaged. Um, and no Korean companies, as I do, as I have said, they don't treat your products with respect and many a times they'll just throw your parcels in the back of the van, back of the van without even thinking um, about what could be in it. So if you're going to send something really valuable, treat it like the crown jewels and you know, make it almost impossible to damage your product inside. Um, I know that's going to extreme lengths to do and you may end up using tons and tons of packaging material. Um, a cheap way of using packaging material is use scrunched up newspaper. It's far cheaper than using bubble wrap which is expensive. For example, uh, I think a, a 10 foot length of bubble wrap, the large type, that was about five pound a roll. Um, for the larger rolls, you're talking about twenty pound. So, you know what you got to remember is, you need to make sure your item that you send through the postage system is heavily protected. Yes, insurance is there, but a lot of times the the items that are fragile that you want to send are not insurable. Because when it comes to the point of you claiming on that insurance, um, the insurers won't pay out for it, unfortunately. The main thing you want to insure your parcel that you send out, right, is against loss. If the postage system, carrier, 
loses it, you want to make sure you can get your money back. But in terms of damages, it's, it's something you're going to have to live with because they won't pay out for certain things, especially when it's glass related. Screens, um, camera lenses, porcelain uh, dogs, whatever it is that's fragile, you've got to make sure you protect your item when you send it. So I hope this video it has been informative about how to protect your valuables when you send them through the postage system. And thank you for watching. Bye bye.